After six months of owning my Apollo pit bike, would I buy another Chinese bike? Well, I guess we'll find out in today's video. So maybe you're in the position right now where you're trying to buy your very first dirt bike or your very first pit bike and you don't really know anything about them. All you know is you got a little bit of money and you don't want to break the bank trying to buy a five, ten thousand dollar dirt bike. So you're thinking, well, maybe this Chinese pit bike's good enough and I can have fun with it. Well, you're not wrong. You can definitely have some fun on these pit bikes. But are they the same quality as the Japanese pit bikes? No. So let's go over. I'm going to cover some of the pros, some of the cons of buying one of these Chinese pit bikes. We'll see if it's worth it in the end. Are you behind on your credit card? Bills? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. Is your landlord ready to evict you? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. Does your girlfriend think you're a fucking worthless loser? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. We're gonna take a quick little break from today's video to thank you our ad sponsor, me, and I want to say that 20% of you are subscribed when you're watching this, the other 80% of you are not. So if you're watching this, make sure you guys go down below, click that subscribe button, and stay tuned for some more awesome content. Thank you, and here we are back to our regular scheduled content. So there's a couple things you're gonna wanna think about when you're going to buy one of these Chinese pit bikes. Uh, and the first one's gonna be where you're gonna be riding your bike. Where do you actually plan on taking this thing and riding it? You're gonna be riding on like some really easy, you know, flat paved roads. You're gonna be out on the gravel, on the dirt. You're gonna be in some really gnar gnarly like technical trails following some like more advanced riders. So that's really gonna depict on whether this bike is gonna suit you or not. Because of the quality of the bike and the, the components on it, uh, it just really isn't suited towards that really hardcore rider. This is really more geared towards someone who's a beginner. So I'd say ideally this bike is geared towards someone who wants to take it on some like more basic gravel or dirt roads or like maybe to just a little backyard pit bike track. Uh, something where it's like a groomed trail where there's not huge boulders and stuff you're going to be nailing. Uh, Cause like with me, when I've taken my bike up the like really rough trails where it's like a dried riverbed and there's huge rocks and stuff. Uh, I've pretty much ended up warping out both the hubs on the front and the rear and like no matter how tight the, uh, the bolt and nut is, uh, the wheel is always like wobbling because of the hub just being warped out because uh, it's just cheap cast, I don't know, cast steel or whatever the hub's made out of, it's just cheap junk and it's uh, it's like ovaling out and the bearing is supposed to be like a press fit and now it's end up just like ovaling it and the bearing can fall pretty much right out so there's just a huge amount of play in both the front and rear wheels. So the next thing to take into consideration is how much is this bike actually going to end up costing you over the time of ownership of having this bike compared to a Japanese bike. So obviously a Japanese bike, you're going to end up forking out like way, way, way more money from the get-go and you're going to have to still replace parts because at the end of the day you're riding a toy, you're going to you're gonna use it, abuse it, and you're going to break stuff on it. There's no, no doubt about that. With the China bikes, uh, you're going to be doing it like every single ride. Like I swear, every ride or every second ride, I take my bike out. Now keep in mind, I do take my bike on some like more technical, difficult trails, but every single time I've ever taken my bike out, I always come back and I always have to fix something on it. Uh, so like I've had to fix my brake, like the actual nub that's built to the frame, the weld snapped on that, uh, the weld snapped on a couple other bolts that like hold on the exhaust, and just, just crap like that that you wouldn't normally have to deal with, of like re-welding brackets back to the bike and stuff. It's just something that's normal, I guess you could kind of expect with one of these bikes, because I've seen other guys with the RXF models, and they've had the same issue where parts are like the poorly welded on, and the welds snap, and then whatever is held onto that, it breaks off. So the quality of the bike uh, is not up to par. But, I mean, they do the job, but if you're gonna be taking it somewhere out really rough and riding it really hard, probably not gonna do it. Now the performance of the Chinese pit bike versus like an actual brand name Japanese pit bike, the power is like noticeably different. Like I have a video where I hopped on my buddy's RM85 two stroke, and that's a Japanese Suzuki bike. And man, that thing hauled ass compared to my Apollo. Like my Apollo is like slow as a slug compared to that RM. And I'll throw up a clip here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, that thing is absolutely nuts, and uh, it puts this thing, this Apollo RFC, to shame for power. The the RM was just like miles quicker. So if you want a quick bike that's actually fast, uh, you're gonna need a Japanese bike because the pit bikes that are these Chinese ones are just not as quick. You know, they're pretty slow. So the Chinese pit bike, it's supposed to be a cheap alternative, right? You know, they're, you can get them for a relatively affordable price. Everyone can afford it really like, if anyone's got a thousand bucks laying around, they can afford one of these Chinese pit bikes. But you're gonna end up spending way more than a thousand on it because it's gonna break all the time and you're gonna need to replace parts on it. 
pretty frequently unless you have a really beginner, really easy rider who's just taking it up and down gravel roads or like maybe in the grass in your backyard. Other than that, you can count on replacing stuff fairly often with it as expected with any dirt bike, but in particular, specifically with the Chinese pit bikes, you're gonna be doing it more often than you would with a, a brand name bike for sure. So now you've broken your bike, you've broken some parts on it. You need to order some parts. Where are all those parts from? China. So where are they, are they gonna take? Three days to get here, two days, probably not. I'm gonna take probably a month or so to get here because everything's overseas. Top that with coronavirus and the whole COVID situation. You bet it's gonna be a while for your stuff to ship here. Uh, and if it is in the States, that's great. It's gonna cost you like 10 times more than the, it is in China for the exact same Chinese and junk part. So now you're paying like US prices like you would on a, a Japanese spec part for like some of the China junk crap that's $9 if you wait three months to get it, or you can buy it now for 54 bucks or something stupid like atrocious, right? Like when I was trying to find my Kickstarter after I just did my 150cc swap in it. If you guys are curious, I did do a 150cc swap in my pit bike, uh, and I have a whole series on that. So if you guys want to check that out, that'll be down in the description. Uh, you can click the channel name and see all those videos. Uh, as well as I have a whole bunch of riding videos if that interests you, so I'll leave some more of those uh, down in the description, or you can click the channel and check out some of the riding videos there. But all I can say is sourcing parts for this bike has been a blast. So who is this bike for? Who should get this bike? Well, I'm gonna answer that. Someone who is learning, uh, it's for someone who wants to just get the understanding of how to ride one of these bikes and uh, learn how to maybe use a clutch or just ride a dirt bike in general, something that's two-wheeled and you got to balance on, you know, learn the clutch, learn the twist, grip, throttle, learn how to brake, learn how to ride. It's a great learner's bike and it's for some, it's definitely geared towards someone who has never had a dirt bike, who's a little bit nervous, who wants something that has, you know, a little bit lower of a, a seat height so you're still able to touch the ground, which is like really comforting for someone who's learning, being able to still put your feet down uh, and actually be able to touch the ground when you're sitting on the bike uh, instead of sitting in like a tippy-toed position. Uh, that's that's really nice for someone who's learning. I know that's confident booster for my girlfriend when she uh, she's just started learning to ride how to ride a dirt bike on, on the Apollo RFC back there. So that's like really cool, and she loves it. And she says it's like super easy to ride, and it's confidence inspiring, and like it just feels good to ride. So for someone who's learning, I think this is an absolutely ideal bike uh, for someone who wants to just take it on some easier trails and putt around and learn how to ride a dirt bike. I think this is the perfect bike for that. One of my favorite parts about the bike for sure is how easily serviceable everything is on the bike though. Because because of it being a Chinese pit bike, everything on it is like really simple. Everything's at eight mil, 10 mil, super basic stuff. Like it, pretty much anyone has the kit to fully disassemble a dirt bike laying around in their shop. If you've got a couple hand tools, you can pretty much take apart an entire Apollo RFC. So that's really easy. Like you can see in my other videos, I completely disassembled this bike to the bare frame and rebuilt the whole thing in like a day. So it's, it's totally possible. You can easily fix these bikes super super easy uh, it's just those Chinese parts just kind of suck to work with because threads like to strip out really easy uh, and just stuff like that where it's like you just wouldn't normally have to worry about like you over tightening something and everything everything just likes to strip out on these bikes so that's just something to know so what are the key to so what are the key takeaways from today's video that I think this bike is great for someone who's learning, great for someone who wants to ride a dirt bike for the very first time, uh, get used to the basics of riding a dirt bike, um, and I just don't think this bike is quite geared towards someone who's going to be an abusive rider, maybe someone who's a little bit more heavy set. I mean, you can totally get away with it, don't get me wrong. I see, I know guys that are like 250 pounds that ride these bikes and they have fun, have a blast on them, and it's not like they just, the thing's a piece of junk after one day. You know, if you take care of the bike, uh, it'll last you and you can have fun on it, you can ride on it. Like, I beat the absolute hell out of my pit bike and it still runs. I mean, I've already had to swap a motor because I killed the first one, I killed the 125cc that was in. In it. Uh, I've bent and broken multiple uh, rear brake levers. Uh, it's just, it's, it, it, the whole thing's a fun, sh fun, sh fun shebang, you know, bent front rims, bent rear rims, warped hubs, fun stuff. So the bikes can be fun. You just got to treat them right with anything. If you take care of it, it'll take care of you out on the trails. Just uh, don't cheap out. Don't put cheaper parts on this. If something breaks, get a nicer part, and then you don't have to worry about it breaking again. Uh, I got all sorts of parts. If you are interested in doing some upgrades to your RFC, uh, I have all the parts down in the description. You can check out and just order them. There's links right there. So if you're interested in getting a carb or filters or tires or rims or 
whatever you're looking for for your Apollo pit bike or any of your Chinese pit bikes, you want to do some upgrades, there's links down in the description. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you guys click the thumbs up, leave a comment down below with any questions, I will answer them, and make sure you guys are subscribed so you can check out uh, when we post some more awesome content and some more riding content. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.